Today, we're going to be taking a look at a Chrome extension called Vizbug. What is this thing? Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my UI tutorial, but you could watch these full UI UX courses at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description and YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com. So today we have a good one for you. We're going to be taking a look at a really in-demand Chrome extension. It's becoming quite popular among UI designers and front-end developers alike, and that is called Vizbug. All right, so it's free. You can install it, and this is the icon right up here. And it basically allows you to quickly experiment with your UI designs and your layouts. Now you can check out the uh, link here in the description to learn more about it specifically, but we are going to look at just about every tool that it offers. So for instance, we have this little crappy looking layout with myself here. And I, if I activate this, we'll see we have this really cool toolbar. And this is essentially what Vizbug is. And depending on what you have selected, you have all of these options for manipulating and you know really quickly iterating over ideas. So we're gonna take a look at this layout and how to improve it with the use of Vizbug. All right, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. All right, so here we have this rather ugly representation of some Google card oriented designs. Um, and as you can see, I'm so freaking lazy. I didn't even bother changing up the data among them. But basically, there's a lot of stuff going wrong with this design wise that we could use this tool um, in a very quick and efficient manner to, to, to make it a lot better um, on the fly. So I, after you have Vizbug installed as a Chrome extension, just click on it up here, works for any web page. And there we go. So now we have this tool set over here. So the very first icon that's selected by default is guides. Now the way this uh, panel works is you'll hover over these and it's going to give you a little bit of information about how to use it and all that good stuff. So um, for the uh, the ruler here, you can, or the guide rather, we could see, unfortunately I can't you you know take my mouse uh, and like show you where it's at. Uh, so just follow along with me. We can see it has the title, title guides and then to the right of it you have the circle G and that's just the shortcut. So you hit G to quickly access that tool. Um, then the, the next part is just uh, the very bottom where it says measure, alt and hover. All right, so it's gonna show you how to use these tools and some of them have a lot more. For instance, for padding, if you wanna add padding, then you can use just any of the arrow keys. If you wanna remove it, then you hit Alt plus those arrow keys and so on and so forth. So it's gonna basically showing you what it does, the shortcut and how to use it. So when you choose one of these tools, you can hover over it and by default, we'll see what the ruler or the guide tool does. Uh, it's just gonna show you these dotted areas. And right now it's perfectly fine because my three cards are all in alignment, both vertically with these, uh, like, like, like uh, right here, these these arrows vertically or the, the dots rather, and also horizontally. Now, a lot, a lot of times I, when I'm doing my design critique on Fridays, I'll see a lot of people get things wrong vertically, like sometimes something will be indented when it shouldn't be and vice versa. So this will help in that regard. Um, next tool up is the inspector or I for shortcut. Um, and you can also pin it by hitting alt click. So this is just gonna tell you different uh, CSS uh, properties and values that are specified. So if, if for some reason you want to keep a certain rule set there, alt left click and it stays there by default. So to get rid of that again, just alt click once more and you're good to go. So it's just gonna give you, you know, information about it. As you can see, I, I specified a, a flex container on the body element here. Um, next up we have accessibility. So this is cool because I, I usually use this contrast tool, which contrast is better for this purpose. Um, but sometimes if, you, uh, if you're dealing with type, for instance, you wanna make absolute certain that you, you people can read your type. Uh, and so we can see we have double A and triple A small. And what the double A and triple A thing means, like for instance, if I get my contrast tool up here, uh, and I select inspect, 
we'll see it fails. However, we can choose auto and choose either for double A, which is for minimum acceptability for the foreground element versus the background element being readable. Um, and then there's also triple A, which will give you a lot of a lot more contrast. Uh, so I'm going to close that out. And I so this will give you the same thing. Um, and yeah, just basically a helpful thing. And, and of course, we'll, we'll change this so it, it is acceptable in terms of contrast. Um, next up, we have move. All right. So you can push elements in and out of their container or shuffle them within it. All right. So to move laterally, just the right and left and then up, down, uh, up, out, in, above and down and in rather. All right. So, uh, for instance, if I take with this uh, move tool and we take this right here and we decide to move it up, up well, it goes outside of the container. Now, if I move it back, oh no, now it's all over the place. How do I get it back? There we go. So now to move within the container, you choose right eye or left, the, the right or left keyboard arrows. All right, and then next up we have margin. So this is probably the area right now the first thing that we could drastically improve about this design is margin uh, and also padding though. Um, so for instance, when it comes to margin, we would want to add uh, space between these elements. So these three elements, I would want a way to select all three of them. Uh, so there's two ways to do that. You could just hold shift, and left click all three, or you could do search down here and you could search for just uh, basically HTML elements, either the element names or the class or IDs. So the class ID associated with this, if we go to our info, happens to be, it's a class, or it's a, not a class ID, it's a class, whatever that's supposed to be, it's card. All right, so if we just type card, there we go, it's selected for us all three of these automatically. Very cool stuff. So now we can go back to here uh, for margin. And if we hover over this, you'll see we can add margin. Alt will remove it. And then all sides is control and up and down. So let's do control up and down to uh, influence all sides of the margin. So control up. So much better. Just with that tiny detail right there. So we also have some margin and such uh, inside of here that I want to change. But what's, before we do that, let's do padding, which is the one right underneath it. And it's it's set up the same exact way in terms of the uh, keyboards, shortcuts and, and controls. So let's select all these. And then we'll choose padding down here. And now let's do control up. That seems pretty good at 16 looking a lot better already. So now we need some space above this image, an equal amount of space, like around 16 pixels or so from the top. So let's add 16 with these three images. So we're selecting all of them. And this time it's going to be margin because it's outside of the container. And to add uh, just on the top, we're just going to uh, hit the keyboard up, uh, up arrow key. Now I wish they would have sort of like a um, kind of like a, a counter on it, but they don't unfortunately. So I don't really know. There we go. We can see this is 12 pixels. So we can uh, we could do Alt down to remove it a little bit. But yeah, I think right there is pretty good. And we could do the same thing for the bottom. So if we take these, we push this down, for instance, uh, just hit the down keyboard keyboard arrow. Right there looks good. We'll take these three elements. Now, sometimes this will happen when you're trying to select all three. So again, this would be one of those times where you would do the info. You can see it's it's uh, DESC. Type in DESC, and then we can go back to margin and hit the down arrow. Right around there looks good. All right. So as you can see very helpful already and we've already come quite a long way in terms of making this look a lot better next up we have flexbox align so remember i i mentioned this there's a flexbox container set on the body element so let's choose this when we can you can barely see it but it is selected up here 
and we can uh, experiment with this by changing the flexbox alignment, distribution, and direction. So shift and control are the two uh, uh, buttons that we can prepend to change things up. So let's just try alignment and see what happens. Okay, so anything inside of here, we're able to control the alignment. Very, very cool with flexbox properties essentially. So the next thing would be um, align, uh, no, distribution rather, shift and left or right. So if I do shift, and basically it's only allowing me to do the same thing if I do left or right. Let's also try direction. So it's control left and down. So control, oh, okay. Very, very, very cool stuff. All right, so next up, we have our hue shift. Okay, so change the foreground and background hue, brightness, saturation, and opacity. So none of my elements currently have a background. If they did, when we hover, uh, when we select it, for instance, it would show up as the actual background color right here. So we could give this a background color just by changing it right here. So hit OK. There we go, we have our background color. And so now we can uh, experiment with this hue shift. Uh, so you could change the saturation again, just by default, uh, the brightness, the hue and opacity. So let's try the opacity just for the fun of it, just to see what happens. So it's control left and right. So I'm just gonna hold it down. There it goes, it takes it a while for it to show up. Uh, so that's basically how you use that tool. Very simple and easy to use. I'm gonna change this back to um, white. There we go. All right, next up after that is shadow. So let's add kind of like a Google Materials sort of uh, shadow right here. So we'll select our card elements and let's add a shadow. So the X and Y position, let's control that first. Something subtle like that. Next up, we'll control the blur. So shift down or up. All right, so I hit shift up for that. The spread is shift left and right. So I'm gonna bring that spread. Yeah, we want it to be down more. And then also the opacity. So the blur, I think I'm gonna take shift down just a bit. It really, kind of goes from one extreme to the other. It seems like it should be in there a little bit more. Um, yeah, we'll leave it right there. And then finally, we have the opacity. So if we want to do control left to really decrease the, how much is that sticking out? That's fine right there. Awesome. So next up we have right here, position. So this just allows you to move SVG, XY and elements, top left, uh, bottom and right. So it's pretty much self-explanatory um, to use this. You just uh, basically move things around. Next up, we have our type element. So let's, let's do that real quick. Um, what's also another way, easy way to select elements? You select it and then just hover over the name, uh, the, the class or whatever it is. Um, and you just click it like a hyperlink. Um, so let's make these a little bit larger. So for text, there's quite a bit of uh, options here for the size up and down. All right, that's easy enough. We also have alignment with left and right, leading, which is the line height, letter spacing, and weight. All right, so I uh, very, very, very cool stuff. Um, let's change this type down here. So we'll take our description. Uh, we will increase the leading with shift and up, just like that. Looks good to me. I love this, very, very easy. Um, let's go on here next. We have edit text, so we can just uh, edit this to anything. Now, why does that happen? Here's one frustrating thing. I, I, I clicked into it. I did not specify to change this, and all of a sudden, it is gone. And you know what's unfortunate about this tool is you can't undo. So uh, if I hit enter, I don't even know what it's doing right now. So now this is kind of screwed up and I cannot go back 
Um, there's no options to undo or redo. Uh, so this is gonna have to stay that way. Um, I guess if I just remove this, this person doesn't have any more a, uh, a role. All right, so um, after that, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you had borders, you can modify it with this option down here. Nothing has a border on my element though. Um, so yeah. Uh, otherwise, very cool tool. There's a few things that should be improved, uh, but other than that, yeah, very cool stuff. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that and learned a lot about VizBug. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you next time.